continue to enjoy this video without further interruption or drone footage. And remember, the FAA is always watching. Everyone, currently we are at a lake about two miles away from our house, and it's a beautiful lake. I don't get to come out here often, and the other day Morgan and I came out here to shoot some footage of this lake because it was really pretty as the sun was setting. Too bad I can't show that footage to you. Here's why. So this past summer, probably last May or June, I sweet-talked my sweet wife into letting me buy a drone. I even wrote her a song and she finally agreed. A drone is just what every YouTubers need, right? It has to be part of your kit. No, not really. You don't have to have a drone. However, that drone has been awesome, awesome. It's been one of my favorite parts of my videos. I have been blessed enough to have taken some incredible footage with that drone. I've taken awesome pictures. Some pictures I've taken are now being used by my church for their website. They're being used by cards that are mailed out by the, for the church. It's been one of my best investments so far. At the end of the day, I've just been really happy with the footage. The drone has helped me tell my story a lot. It helps me establish my scene, tell you where I am, giving you some beautiful footage of my surrounding. All right, so here's the second situation. In case you don't know, my YouTube channel has been monetized for a while now. And when you hear YouTubers, you know what that means. Bank rolls, right? No, not really. This is how it really goes. So of course, I've been hearing about drone licenses and stuff like that. But to be honest with you, I kind of just brush it off because I'm really not making any money on this YouTube channel. And when I say not any, I'm talking about pennies. You know, I would see these YouTubers putting drone footage in their videos, and I'm like, surely they don't go out and get a license just to put a five second drone footage in their video. So I just kind of wrote that off. Recently, I found this video of this one girl who has been talking about this and I've started looking more and more into the rules and the laws and get a deeper understanding of it. And I want to start freelancing a little more, sell my pictures, and use my drone to take video footage of, of stuff around me, whether that's selling footage, selling pictures. So upon further looking into this drone laws, if I use any drone footage on my YouTube channel without a drone license, I would be breaking the law. What the FAA has this to say about part 107. Part 107 certification is required for anyone that uses a drone in the furtherance of business. Technically speaking, a monetized YouTube channel that shows drone flights, uses video or aerial photographs, constitutes as using a drone in furtherance of business. They see that when you guys watch my videos in the five or 10 seconds that I put in of the drone footage per video is making money, even if it's a penny. And so I'm sure this is them putting a blanket statement over that because I might be making a penny, but this big YouTube over there is probably making hundreds of thousands of dollars a year from that video of that footage. And so I kind of understand the rules. So that video that I mentioned of that girl who was in the same boat as I am wondering what to do, she actually emailed the FAA and asked them about this. And they said, yes you will need a drone license in order to use drone footage in your video. One more thing that really caught me off guard from all of this, from the research, was that the FAA said, when you post drone video to social media, you no longer own the rights to that footage. That is no longer considered recreational use and you must have a license. And to be honest with you, I didn't know that. I thought whatever I post belongs to me. 
until I decide to give that rights away, but I guess that's not it. And there are people who do make money off of Instagram through their posts, so I could kind of see that. Yeah, honestly, from what I understand, the FAA is not out there looking for YouTubers who use drone footage in their videos. Most of the issues seems to happen when someone is reporting you because you have competing businesses or they're jealous of the footage you were able to take with your drone and they couldn't do that. Or some idiot out there decides to fly a drone into a helicopter or fly the drone into a building and cause hundreds of thousands of dollars worth of damage that's when the FAA really gets involved. So the FAA has those other people to deal with. Therefore, these YouTubers are probably hoping that if they fly under the radar, that the FAA won't pay any attention to them. And that's it. The thing about me though is, I've always heard and believed that you don't mess with the government. You always do things the correct way. And specifically, stay clear of any three letters alphabet that belongs to the government. You don't want to get under the radar. It's not good. It's about to rain. That lesson has worked out for me so well so far up to now and I intend to stay clear of the radar. My question is why walk this gray line and always be nervous you know am I gonna get in trouble are they gonna come after me is this gonna be an issue is that post too long is that too much be worried about if someone dislikes me enough to turn me in or be worried about what if I accidentally crash it I don't really want to have to be worried that I'm flying my drone trying to capture this beautiful sunset off the mountains and a police officer in the park walks up and me be nervous on if I have a license to operate that drone or not. I would rather know the law and explain my case to the officer and say yes I am an FAA certified drone pilot and I know the rules and I know I can be here. That way things would go a little smoother. Plus also this way I would be in the clear in case the FAA decides to bring the hammer down on all these YouTubers who don't have a license. For me to be posting pictures, posting clips and take that chance with FAA seems really silly. So, at the end of the day, I think I have three options. One, stop showing my drone footage, take it completely off channel, sell my drone, get rid of it, put it on the shelves as a decorative piece, and have good lasting memories. Yeah, that's not gonna happen. Two, roll the dice and see what happens with FAA. They may never come for me. Yeah, that's really not how I roll either. Three, buckle down, study for the exam, take the exam, pass the exam, fly my drone like I want. Yeah, that's more like it. I mean, option three makes no sense. I could fly my drone legally, understand the laws, understand the rules, could have a discussion with the FAA if I need to, have a discussion with the police officers if I need to, then be able to make some money on the side, like drone photography, drone videography, real estate photography, real estate videography. That's a no-brainer. To pass the exam, it's a 60 questions exam. The exam is issued by the FAA at an FAA testing facility. Luckily for me, there's an airport about three miles from my house, and um, they are a certified testing facility, so that should be easy enough. The hard part of this exam is gonna be the material that's being tested on. It's been five years since I studied for any exams at all, so that's gonna be different getting back into the studying mode. The material that you need to know on this exam is pretty crazy, pretty intense. It's the stuff that real pilots have to know. I'm talking about sectional charts of airports, weather patterns, airspace rules, airspace height, MOA, military operating area, prohibited airspace, restricted airspace, regulated airspace, non-regulated airspace, fog formation, weather codes. And I don't mean like it's 70 degrees outside, sunny today. We're talking about METAR and TAF, these official pilot weather stations. After doing some research, there are a lot of programs out there that can help you prepare for the exam. A lot of people recommend them. However, these programs are somewhere around $150 to $300. Since I'm not making any money off of this, I don't really want to invest any more money into it than I really have to. I decided that I'm going to take this first part on my own and see if I pass. It's a gamble, but if I pass and I save the money, if I don't pass, then I'll reinvest the money. So after scouring the internet for free studying guides like Tony Northrup, and I'll link some of this stuff below because it was really helpful to me.
Alright, so I ended up watching Tony's video about three times this past week, and then I found some other online materials that were also study guides and practice exam. I took about five to eight practice exams. And to clarify, I'm not saying don't take the course because it probably was very beneficial. It for sure is a lot easier than scrolling the internet and look from web page to web page for practice material or for studying material. But what I'm saying is the materials are out there if you don't want to pay for a course. It'll just take a little more time to study for it. The biggest thing though is even though I found all of these materials and I studied them all and I felt like I know them all, part of me still wonder are there things on a paid courses that I don't know about? So it makes me a little nervous walking into this exam because you would think that the paid courses would have all the materials you need. But then again, it's an FAA official exam, so can someone prepare you for all of it or not? So anyways, I decided I'm gonna roll the dice and save $150 to $300. Today's the day, after all of the studying all this time, it's finally time to go take the test. Luckily, there's an airport about 10 minutes from my house. I really wanted to take it at eight o'clock this morning just to get it over with because, you know, you've been studying and studying and studying this whole time and then the nerves is just there. The other part of it is I was too nervous to know, well, do I take the test? Do I not take the test? Am I ready? Am I not ready? So eventually, when it's time for me to come out, go and register to take the test, the spot was already full. So I have to take it this afternoon. A little nervous to be honest with you because I haven't taken a test in a long time. It's going to be somewhat embarrassing if I fail the test. So let's hope that I pass. I'll see you in about an hour. All right, here we are. So the test took me about an hour. It took me about 30 minutes actually to get through the test and then I went back through it one more time and I marked about 10 or 12 questions I wasn't sure of because it was a little tricky. But I passed and I made a 93. So that was pretty good, pretty excited because I, for sure when I pressed submit, my heart was beating really fast because I didn't think I passed. Um, I was hoping for maybe a 75 or an 80 just so it's not too embarrassing, but exciting. Well, anyway, so with this, I could now advertise myself as a drone pilot, a certified drone pilot. So all is well, the channel is back with more drone footage, and I'm pretty excited about that. If you're new here, I'm glad you're here. I hope you subscribe. If you've been here before, thank you so much for coming back, and I'll see you in the next video. And let's go with some celebratory drone footage. <laughs>